Right now we're joined by an old friend who's going to make some new introductions, new plant introductions. That is Jessica Robertson from Greenleaf Nursery. Welcome back to Central Thank Texas you. Gardener. I'm so excited to be here. The first one is a viburnum, mm -hmm. and this is a really useful plant in so many situations. Tell me about Absolutely. this. Absolutely. So Shades of Pink Viburnum is a new introduction. It's a more compact viburnum, so four to six foot um, mm -hmm. tall, a little bit more upright. The nice thing is that it reblooms. So a lot of um, uh, the old nice. pink blooming viburnums did not rebloom. So sure. you get a spring bloom, and then you also get a fall bloom. Full sun, part shade. Uh, okay. Great new introduction. A great plant for most Texas soils. Too. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. it okay. tolerates our soils very well. Okay. That height, it sounds perfect for you know the back of a bed or mm -hmm. for screening. Absolutely, you can go either way with that one. Okay, well that's a great plant. Mahonia is the next one, and this is I call it thread leaf. What's the, the actual name for this one? You know, this is more of like a fern leaf mahonia, or okay. thread leaf is another name mm -hmm. for it. Uh, but it's just a really nice, beautiful mahonia, and that yeah. it's not like the old leather leaf where you have like a thicker, you know. Right. wide blade to it. They're real thin. Right. Uh, but this one's called Indigo Flare, and Indigo mm -hmm. Flare is a newer introduction. Uh, it's a, ma mainly a shade plant, but the mm -hmm. nice thing is it doesn't lose its leaves on the bottom like some of the yeah, older Mahonia. That's true. And right. has a beautiful new flush of copper color. So about two mm -hmm. to three foot um, tall mm -hmm. and wide, maybe a little taller, um, kind of yeah. depending where it's at. But definitely deep shade to part sun on that uh, one. Okay, but perfect for that kind of ethereal quality that it has. Mm -hmm. And this is a plant that would take a little more moisture, right? I, they do like to have a little bit more moisture. Mm -hmm. They're not going to be, you know, a really dry growing plant right. on that one. So it's not xeric in that kind of sense. No, it's not. And the, the new growth on it is a beautiful copper color to okay. it. It has a little bit of a blue tint to the That's, leaves as hence well. The name. Hence the name. Okay, mm -hmm. very good. Well, we, you brought a group of sage, sedges, excuse yes. me. And I love these plants and just they're so eye popping in terms of the color. These are full shade. Um, mm -hmm. And these are in a series called the Evercolor series. So um, really nice because they're perfectly evergreen. They mm -hmm. take deep, deep shade. They'll take a little bit of part sun, but you really want to put them in a shady location. Right. Wonderful in containers. And they stay nice and evergreen and deer resistant. Yeah, so added right. bonus there. So, and the texture, the look, it's so, it's so appealing. It is. There's a beautiful, beautiful texture to it. Yeah, right. So again, people should be on the lookout for sedges mm -hmm. and then... Yes. This next introduction is kind of mind blowing to me. It's a form of mondo grass. It sure is. And when you look at it, no way. You think liriope, but right. it is one of my favorite shade plants. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to get about two to three foot tall and wide. Mm -hmm. uh, it's got white flowers that actually stick up above the foliage oh, when wonderful. it blooms, and it'll bloom yeah. from late summer into into fall. Okay. Uh, deep shade on that one. Um, and moderate water re requirements. Well, lots of people have those deep shady corners, so this mm -hmm. is a perfect plant for that. I could see it in mass, too, especially with the bloom. Absolutely. It's beautiful whenever you put it in mass. Yeah, well, that's terrific. The next one always makes me nervous to talk about sunshine ligustrum and i just because i'm nervous about privet spreading around yes. but this the the color on this one is kind of irresistible sterile it is a sterile non-blooming ligustrum says. so it is not going to give you allergies <laughs> and it is not going to spread invasively yes. and that chartreuse color i think is so underutilized in, in central mm -hmm. texas it's a beautiful it'll take full sun um full shade the more sun you give it the more chartreuse color it is perfect the more shade the more green color you'll get to okay. it Okay. I think it's about four four foot tall and wide. Well, the color really is eye popping, and I like occasionally see that intense chartreuse color. It's gorgeous. Yeah. It really is a pretty one, and it stays nice and evergreen too. And then a dwarf spirea that is it can take her climate. Heat tolerant. Dwarf no. spirea, <laughs> two to three foot tall and wide. It's called Little Bonnie. Okay. Uh, it's gonna have like pinkish fuzzy flowers whenever it mm -hmm. starts blooming. Uh, and the foliage really stands up in the heat. In fact, I've been watching that plant in our trial gardens for about two to three years. Mm -hmm. And um, I think it's gonna be a really great new introduction. Okay, well, spirea, an old time favorite? And yeah. And now updated. Absolutely, okay. for Central Texas. <laughs> okay. and. The next one, I love the texture on this, Breeze Lomandra. I love this plant. It's another one that I think is so uh, underutilized. Um, it's great evergreen, wonderful in containers. It's zone eight, so if you put it in container, hard freeze, it may kind of take it back a little mm -hmm. bit, but it comes back pretty religiously. Uh, and in milder climates, in milder winters, it stays perfectly evergreen. Well, you can't ask more from a plant in terms of texture and form. Absolutely, it doesn't get too big. So it's, yeah. it's great in that it stays sort of that moderate, about mm -hmm. 24 inches on okay. that one. Okay, and the next one, I can't, I'm having a hard time saying this, 
Cold Hardy Bottle Brush. Cold Hardy Bottle Brush. <laughs> this one is called Woodlander's Hardy Bottle Brush, and it is okay. the most cold hardy bottle brush that I have seen. Okay. Uh, harsh, harsh winter um, in the last couple of years that we've had. I, it has stayed perfectly evergreen, except for maybe a little bit of burn on the mm -hmm. new growth. Six by six, standard bottle brush, beautiful flowers in late spring, early summer. Um, I think it's a great replacement for roses in a deer prone area because it is super deer resistant. You can't ask for a lot more than that. And again, cold hardiness is an A plus for any bottle Absolutely, brush. Absolutely, for any bottle brush. Right, right. Baby Jade Boxwood. This is a really compact boxwood, it right? It is probably one of the most compact boxwoods uh, on the market that does well in our soils in Texas. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be like a two to three foot tall and wide boxwood, mm -hmm. uh, super miniature form, doesn't tend to get a really woody base, um, okay. and it doesn't really tend to bronze in the winter like a lot of other boxwoods yeah. would as okay. well. So perfect for rock gardens, you know, again, for uh, the, that kind of scales, perfect, absolutely. It has a nice rounded form to it naturally, too. So, okay. I mean, you yeah, could topiary nice. it if you wanted to yeah. or keep it real formal or, or just kind of let it go. And I find boxwood are very accepting of different soil types and Sun, deer don't like shade, them. shade, deer, it's like a perfect combo for us. Yeah, there. right. Okay, Cinnamon Girl Distillum. This is a completely new plant to me. Yes, the distilliums I think are very underutilized mm -hmm. uh, plant and they're really now starting to finally pick up in popularity. Mm -hmm. This is a newer compact form. So it's only gonna get about two to three foot tall and maybe three to four foot wide. Stays perfectly evergreen uh, during wow. the winter. And it really, really can stand our hot summers as well mm -hmm. um, and keep that beautiful, glossy, shiny uh, growth to it. And this one, Cinnamon Girl, hence the name, the new growth has sort of a cinnamon and rust color to it. Well, again, I'm a big fan of boxwood, so that sounds like a terrific addition, especially rounded form, natural rounded form, less pruning, less shearing. Which yes, is very yes, the distillions are great plants. So, um, white margin ro snow rose. Snow rose, white okay. margin snow okay. rose. Right. It's a sarissa, uh, it's a zone eight, mm -hmm. um, maybe harsh, harsh winter, may die to the ground, comes back every single year. Mm -hmm. Beautiful variegation to the foliage and beautiful flowers that'll come on about late spring, early summer um, mm -hmm. and kind of bloom sporadically thereafter. Uh, but beautiful variegation to it. Milder climates is going to stay pretty evergreen. Okay, so is this a good container specimen for zone eight? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it may get bit back a little bit more as a zone eight in a container on a harsh winter. You may have to protect it on a really hard freeze just mm -hmm. to make sure those roots don't freeze. Right. Uh, but for the most part, when I've seen it die to the ground, it'll come back every single year. Okay, now tell me about the soil conditions for that one. Uh, that one is it's going to like to have a little bit more of a moist or moderate soil condition. It's mm -hmm. not going to be super drought tolerant on that, but mm -hmm. it's very tolerant of our alkaline soils here in Central Texas. Okay. So, so wide range of soils. Okay, just a little bit of winter protection to make sure it gets through, and then otherwise it sounds like a great plant. I mean, even if it dies back to the ground, snip it off, it mm -hmm. usually will come back. And it comes back quick, so it's not like you're waiting all summer for it to get back to a nice okay. size. All right, and you know, I'm just looking and I was wondering if it's a pollinator plant, do you know? I don't know, okay. that is a, so, so new that I'm really not sure. <laughs> well, new to everybody. Now the next one, I'm having a hard time getting around. This is a dwarf yopon. Mm -hmm. I think it looks chlorotic a little bit. Don't think that, all right? You, people think <laughs> I want to put, me. I wanna put me. iron, I want to put nitrogen on it. In a, in a bucket, in a container, it's a hard sell. But once mm -hmm. you get it in the ground, the more sun it gets, um, and also kind of diff different times of the year, the more chartreuse yellow it will um, turn. I think it's going to be, uh, I think it's underutilized. People just mm -hmm. don't know how to use these plants in Central Texas because right. they think they look chlorotic. You're but right. you got to get past that. The millennials love this plant. So, okay, now what is it about for the millennials? Is it the color? I think it's the color, I really uh -huh. do, I really do. Because you get that really nice pop of color, especially when you contrast it well with things like, mm -hmm. um, you know, a darker foliage plant, such as Laura Petalum or Purple right. Fountain Grass or something like that, where you yeah. really get a nice contrast with that chartreuse color. Well, people should be more accepting of chartreuse, I think. I agree, <laughs> plant it and you'll love it. I, I, you know, the reason I like it actually is, uh, and this one, like I said, I had a little trouble getting over, but the reason why I like chartreuse, it feels so cool in our Texas summer. It does, it sure does, you're right. If it's done right in the right area, then it looks amazing. All right, well, just real quickly, you know, these are all available, right? These are gonna be in local nurseries? They all are, they're all available locally um, through here, Dallas, Houston, Central Texas, um, Austin. You should be able to find these plants pretty easily. Well, you are a dream guest. Well, thanks. <laughs> Thank you for the introductions. Well, thanks for having me. <laughs> it's always a pleasure to have you with us.
And uh, again, I think our audience is going to be super excited to get out to those local nurseries mm -hmm. and pick up some of these wonderful new introductions. So again, it's great to have you back. Thanks for having me. Okay, and coming up next is our Pride and Chef.